my beautiful bride. Linda and I looked into each other's eyes with the look of two people still in love after 15 years of marriage. I asked her to the homecoming dance 19 years ago, and we've been together ever since. The cliched story of an athlete and cheerleading captain's relationship turned. Out not to be doomed, but rather a story of everlasting love and commitment. She was mine and I was hers. That said, I was annoyed that I had to socialize with my wife's morally ambiguous friends. They were upper middle class, but their behavior was that of scum. D and her friends were the worst with their sexual innuendos and alleged hookups. The exceptions were Dee's husband Dave and Phil and Anne. The dinner and dance went well. I was about to tell Linda it was time to go to the hotel when Dee shouted, that's him, Marco Lavalli. Everyone at our table stared at the superstar professional quarterback with his two teammates and a couple of minimally dressed hookers. In his white tee, he looked like a reject from the Saturday Night Fever remake. They took their seats except for Mark, who stood scanning the room. I'd never be. And interested in professional sports. Professional athletes are narcissistic jerks with inflated salaries. I prefer high school and college sports. He's looking around trying to pick out a girl for the night. I hope it's going to be me, exclaimed Delaware. I found it odd that Dave reacted poorly to his wife's statement. What do you mean? asked Phil. Mark always chooses a married woman for his bed for the night I've heard. He's done it over a 100 times, according to the reviews. He's a hot sex machine, said Dee, excitedly. That's disgusting and immoral, said Anne disapproving. No, you wouldn't say that. After. Spending the night with Superman. Dee teased her. I turned to Linda and whispered, It's time to go honey time to celebrate our 15th anniversary. Alone in the honeymoon suite. Yes, he's coming this way. I hope he picks me, said Dee. Hopefully Dave's reaction was annoyed, and then I saw a big guy standing between us. Mr. Superstar himself. He took my wife's hand and said with a smug smile, You are the most beautiful and sexiest woman in this club. Would you like to dance with me? Darling, the loving look my wife was looking at me easily turned into a look of intense lust as she gazed mesmerized into the eyes of my new enemy. What the hell was going on? Linda had never looked at any man like that before. Not even me. She started to rise from her seat. Was she really going to spend the rest of the evening with this piece of shit? For fuck's sake? I grabbed her arm and pulled her back to her seat. Sit back in your seat and you can get the fuck off. Marky. I growled both Linda the Creep and everyone at the table were. Shocked. People at other tables looked at us. I had never displayed physical actions or profanity before. I had always been the quiet, polite intellectual type. Now, however, I seemed like the rude caveman I had no problem becoming if my world was under attack. Perhaps my years spent as an army officer overseas had made me that way. So, sue me. You insecure asshole, let Linda go. She doesn't belong to you. Mark chose her to be his woman for the night. He'll get her back tomorrow. De hissed. That's where you're wrong, you mega slut. She belongs to me as I belong to her. Our wedding vows say, so now get your ugly fat face out of our business. I yelled, hey kid, my name is Mark. Be respectful. Otherwise you don't have tea throw a tantrum. I just want to dance with your hot wife. I promise I'll bring her by tomorrow. Sometime now act cool and you won't get hurt too much. Mark growled to emphasize his point. He squeezed my shoulder and it really hurt what a grip. I, a 6 to 195 pound man, an army veteran who had played high school soccer years ago, was about to get into a fight with a 6 to 240 pound professional soccer player. I had to play smart plan, wrestle, win, Stop holding me down, you animal Marky. Get out of here before I kick your butt, roared. I. As I yelled, the white wine I was holding in my hand slipped unnoticed between his legs. Marky took a few steps back, looking at the cold spot in surprise. Then, an extremely grim expression appeared on his face. Hey, everyone I made. Mark Lavalier pissed himself. He's afraid of me. I'm gonna kill you, roared Marky. As he lunged toward me, he saw the table knife in my left hand, aimed at his crotch, and tried to stop his movement. He looked comical, his right fist pulled back his torso, tilted forward 45 degrees, and the point of the knife touching his most prized possession, which was certainly not his brain. Blurred patches of motion appeared on our sides. They were Hank the Bouncer. 
Tony the owner, manager, and a cop moonlighting at the club. As they pulled Marky away from me, I threw the knife under the table. Two of Marky's teammates stood back and told him to calm down. Marky punched Hank in the face. Then the cop and Hank kicked Marky to the floor and handcuffed him. That seemed to calm Marky down. I guess he just realized he was about to get in trouble. Tony, my high school buddy, took me aside. Jim, are you okay? My shoulder hurts where they grabbed me. Other than that, I think I'm fine. I'm sorry about the way things turned out. I hope nothing bad happens to you because of this incident. No, I'm the majority owner. I'm permanently. Banning that asshole, which I should have done months ago. He snapped four marriages here, but he hasn't done anything violent until now. My club doesn't need the hassle and negative publicity. I'm paying for drinks and food for you and your hostess. Officer Williams approached me and asked me to tell him about myself. I told him that Marky had grabbed me and threatened me. I forgot to mention the table knife. He asked if I was hurt, and I took off my coat and shirt. There were bruises on my shoulder from where he grabbed me. The office. R. took pictures of the injuries. The officer said that Marky told him that I tried to stab him. I said I didn't remember that. The officer walked over to the table and counted the knives on the table, one knife per person on. The table. Dave smiled at me holding the knife in his hand. Okay, sir. I need you to come down to the station tomorrow morning to sign a complaint and make a statement. I'm arresting Mr. Laval on two counts of assault, disorderly conduct, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. Have a good evening. Two more officers showed up and led Marky out of the club so he could go to his jail cell for free. I walked back to the table and looked at everyone. Linda looked like she was in shock. Dee looked like she wanted to explode. I nodded to Dave, we should get going. I wish I could say the weekend was delightful, but I'd be lying if it was. I said sarcastically as Linda grabbed her. Code and purse. De shouted at me. You, you, you are a small, innocent dog. Mark is a 1,000 times better than you. It was your insecure, childish attitude that got Mark in trouble. It's all your fault. I laughed how ironic I'm being accused by a mega slut of taking down an amoral wife S. Stealalling. Narcissistic sociopath. I should record this moment for my electronic diary, say cheese. I snapped the picture to an enraged D, who responded by throwing a glass at me. It flew past me and hit the old man in the head. The old man's son got up from his chair and walked over to our table. That's our line. I'll see you later, not. As we were getting into the car, Linda said in a low voice, Jim, honey, what I want to say is not a word. Linda, not a word until we get to the room. Then you stupid, traitorous bitch will definitely have a conversation. I said in a voice low with rage. When we entered the room, Linda walked quickly to the far corner and sat down in a chair. She was shivering, clutching her purse to her chest. I took off my coat and tossed it toward the closet. What are you afraid of? Have I ever hit you? No, no, you've never hit me before. It's just the way you acted today. I've never seen this side of you before, she said with moistened. Eyes, what can I say? It's been a long time since I've been in fight mode and certainly not in front of you. So why did you try to trick me tonight, cheat? I wasn't trying to deceive. Mark asked me to deceive. Mark asked me to dance with him and he was such a nice gentleman. I couldn't say no. You could have been nice and let Mark take me. At that moment her cell phone buzzed and Linda looked at it. You told me that all your dances were for me. But when Shitbeer Marky asked you to dance, you tried to leave with him. What kind of phone is that? I'm talking to you. I said angrily, it's D. She's at the police station. Mark is there too poor Mark. He's being detained, she said sadly cool two assholes in jail. Maybe they can find a shared cell and said I. Gleefully her phone. Buzzed again and Linda read the message carefully. I didn't like the smile on her face. I have to take this. Linda said excitedly and started texting back. As she walked past me, I snatched the phone out of her hands, made my way to the bathroom, and locked the door. She immediately started pounding on the door, demanding her phone back. As I scrolled through he, our text messages. I was shocked at the evil plot and betrayal, apparently. D, Linda, and Wendy had been planning for months to hook up with Marky's Lothario, now called Marky's Jailer. D had somehow managed to contact Marky's press agent and learned that Marky would be at the club tonight. Linda was now shouting obscenities at me while pounding on the door. Most shocking were the last few messages. 
D was talking to Marky at the reservation desk. Marky wanted to get back at me by hooking up with Linda. The following week, he offered to take Linda with him to Paris and spend a week there. D asked Linda if she was interested. Linda replied, really? I'd be a GWTF that lying sneaky, cheating slut. I tried to get my anger under control, so I wouldn't do something really bad to her. After a few minutes, I noticed that things had quieted down had she really left me and gone to her lover. I cautiously opened the door and found Linda sitting on the floor blocking the path to the door to the hallway. She was crying, silently. I want a divorce, I said in a low, steady voice. No, no, please let me explain. It's not what you think. You don't need to explain. You're a lying whore who framed your husband. You disgust me. Please, it's not what it seems. It started out as a joke. We thought a celebrity like him would never consider one of us married cows as a one-night stand partner. Then Dee found out that Mark likes married women, so that became the main topic of our conversations at Nino. Nee we fantasized about what it would be like to be with Mark for a whole night. Even Anne joined in. We never thought he'd ask any of us out. Liar. You bitches knew that asshole was going to be at the club tonight. This is willful cheating. We need to talk about divorce. I owned the house a year before we got married, so you're out. As for our two kids. I want. I growled, no, 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 please. I get it now. I'm so sorry you think I did a bad thing. She screamed, crawling over to me and wrapping her arms around my legs. She sobbed and bobbled. I was only going to dance with him. I don't want to get divorced, not to leave with him. I love you want only you. Please don't divorce me. I'm so sorry. When Mark chose me, I wanted to rub it in my friend's face I would never leave. I could brag that. I danced with a celebrity, just dancing. No sex, you're my husband. I love you, please don't do this. I beg you. Did my usually dumb wife have an epiphany? Hard to say. Epilogue, R20. Tea wedding anniversary. Linda and I danced to slow music. Yes, we're still together. Why did I stay primarily because of the children? A broken home usually means broken children. The proof is in the kids, my oldest. Ellie received academic and athletic scholarships for field hockey, and she'll be moving across town in the fall to attend university. My son Noah is a soccer and basketball star. He is also junior class president and is on the honors list. And then there's my four-year-old daughter, Grace. Yes, we have another child. She was conceived a week after the incident at the club. She is a shy, smart girl who prefers books to sports. We put her in recreational gymnastics as we prefer well-rounded children. Why the name Grace? This leads me to the second reason I am not divorcing Linda. A person can receive grace and pass it on to another who needs it. Linda did wrong to me, our children, and her parents. As she sat crying on the floor, she finally realized what she had done wrong. She apologized and asked for forgiveness. I had the power to do so, and I gave her that forgiveness. Of course there had to be a legal defense against future fidelity problems. We signed a prenuptial agreement that included serious penalties for cheating. For the first year. I checked her phone records every few weeks. I bought her a new cell phone with a new number. I did not allow her to transfer her contacts to it. Linda never memorized phone numbers, so that guaranteed no contact with that immoral bitch D and her witch friends. Dave and I are best friends now. He saved me by pulling my knife out from under the table. A few months later, he indeed divorced. He has a new wife. Now she's sweet, nice, and eight years younger. Will we live to see our 25 the anniversary? I think there's still a 90% chance of that. What happened to Marky 14 months later? He, his gang, and a married woman he had picked out for the night were leaving a nightclub in New York City when someone opened fire on them. All of the men were wounded. His male friends suffered minor injuries. Marky was wounded in the knee and spine. He now gets around in a wheelchair and a special van. We now have a 100% chance of living to see our 25D day. 